Good morning. I know it's dark. I don't have a light set up yet. It's 5 a.m. In yoga, um, the time between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. is called Brahma Muhurta. And it's considered a sacred time. It's also the best, considered the best time to do pranayam practice or breathing meditation, if you will. And pranayam is a method that calms the nervous system and also fills your body with uh, oxygen from the air, what in yoga, yoga would be called prana. Prana is equivalent to what we call chi in Chinese medicine. You build prana through rest, uh, through eating a healthy diet, through having a calm mind, and by yogic practices like asanas and pranayama. And pranayama builds prana directly because the, our there's prana in the food that we eat, but there's also prana in the air that we breathe. And this is quite equivalent to Chinese medicine, which says that we get our chi, our energy, which is how we live, uh, from food, food and water, from breath, from breathing, and from sleep. And you, you can't live without food and water. You can't live without breathing for more than a minute or two, if, if that, for a normal person. And of course, you have to be able to sleep to be healthy. So that's how we get our energy, our chi, our prana. Um, Nauli Kriya Pranayam. In Nauli Kriya, um, you are going to create what's called a mudra or a seal with your tongue. You're going to take your tongue. I'm going to actually walk over here into the light so that you can see. Maybe you can see. There we go. Um, Keshri Mudra in yoga is a mudra that we do with our tongue. Now, mudras are what are called uh, um, seals, um, and they create energy pathways, chi pathways. So, for example, look at my hand. This is a mudra. When you do this with your hand, uh, that's a mudra. Um, this is a mudra. So these are, are mudras that you do with your hands. And they're what are called seals. They direct the flow of energy in a particular way because the channels or nadis flow th all through the body. And so they flow particularly through the tips of the fingers. And tips of the fingers are very powerful in acupuncture as well. So Keshri Mudra. Keshri Mudra, you do this with your tongue. You, you take your tongue and you roll it back. I guess you roll it, roll it back so that you're trying to touch the tip of your tongue to the top of your palate, all the way back onto the soft palate as far as you can. What's interesting is some of the South Indian languages, they naturally roll their tongue back to pronounce some of the consonant sounds. So this will be easier for them. Actually, over time, you can actually stretch your tongue and get it further back. So, um, you're going to go like this with your tongue. You, you don't have to stick it out. I'm just showing you my tongue so you have an idea. So you're going to take your tongue tip and roll it back and try to touch the that part of your tongue just underneath the tip. Try to touch that all the way back to the soft palate. Okay, so that's the mudra that you're going to, going to make with your tongue. I'm sitting here even though it's dark because this is a place where I can put the camera and I'm also near the open window. Uh, pranayam is best done outside and if uh, because you're trying to get oxygen from the air. And uh, if not outside, then if it's in a room, then try to open the windows. And um, also, um, it, what's really good, uh, according to my guru, my yoga teacher, Yogi Yermaya, he would have us take our shirts off. And um, he felt that you're absorbing the prana through your skin as well as through your nose. And that's actually very congruent 
with what um, a Buddhist monk that I know, uh, Tanis Robiko, also has to say about about um, absorbing prana or chi through the air. Okay, um, you're going to take your left hand and place it um, in your lap, and then place your right hand uh, on top of your lap. I'm going to actually come back over here in the light. Sorry. Uh, I'm not yet set up with lights, so I'm going to turn on this big light so you can see. Um, this is your left hand. This is awful light. I apologize. This is your right hand. So they're going to lay flat on each other like that, but then they're going to be in the palm. Uh, I'm sorry, in 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 your lap. Just like you see many pictures of the Buddha meditating, and he has one hand over the other like that. Okay, so now... Take a minute and just relax. And you're going to, in Nauli Kriya, you're going to breathe in and try on the in-breath you're going to try to fill the lowest part of your belly first, and then the middle part of the low, and then the upper part of the low, and then the middle of your belly, bit by bit until you get all the way up to the top of the chest, to the intercostal muscles, and have a nice, slow, gentle breath, in-breath, and then continue with your out-breath. And try to have the in-breath and out-breath approximately the same length of time. Uh, but the main thing to pay attention to is having the, the tongue pressed well against the upper palate, and then also recruiting the muscles of your, of your belly and chest in order to fill the lungs more profoundly into their deepest and lowest lobes. <clears throat> As I said before, um, in yoga, what's very nice is you swallow a very small quarter teaspoon of sesame oil. If you don't have sesame oil, you can use coconut oil. If you don't have coconut oil, you could even use ghee. Um, and that lubricates your throat against the heat and dryness of the pranayam. That the pranayam can, can incur because... Um, uh, just the nature of, of, of wind is drying. If you want to dry something, you blow on it. So in this case, you're bringing a lot of air in through your throat, but it's not a, you don't have to do it, but it's recommended. Okay. I'm going to start and I want to get close because I want you to hear the sound that's produced because when you do the in-breath, with in Keshri Mudra, Mudra like that, you're going to naturally make a kind of a va sound, and on the out breath, you're going to naturally make a kind of e sound. And that's just because of how your throat is opening and closing when you're in that Keshri Mudra. What Keshri Mudra, Mudra does is by pulling your tongue up, up, it opens up the throat and creates a larger pathway.
So um, how many complete in and out breaths are you, you going to do? In yoga, in Sanskrit, the in-breath is called purakam, and the out-breath is called reshakam. And so in the beginning, what's good is to do 16 of these twice a day. In the morning, as early as possible, ideally between three and six, followed by some yoga asana and meditation. And uh, in the evening before dinner, the reason why you want to do it before dinner is that you always want to do this when your belly is empty. You don't want to do pranayama after eating, obviously. And also, if you make a decision to always do it every evening before dinner, you'll be sure to do it because you're always going to have dinner. So if you don't have dinner until you've done this, that's a way to make yourself do it. If you decide, okay, I'll do it a few hours after dinner, you know what happens, you get tired, you get distracted. So uh, it's best to do it before dinner. And you'll find that when you do um, Nali Kriya Pranayam, that you feel very relaxed and your whole body feels immediately full of energy. Um, for those of you that are younger, you'll find that you have a much larger um, inhalation capacity than you have when you're older. So um, you, you'll find that really quickly you'll be getting much deeper breaths than I was able to demonstrate. Um, and so that's an introduction to Nauli Kriya Pranayam using Keshri Mudra, in which your tongue is folded back and pressed up against, the tip is pressed against the soft palate, and your hands are resting on the palm, in, in, in your lap, the left hand with, with the palm facing up, the back of the right hand is in the palm of the left hand, so it's, they're cradling each other. If you find it more comfortable to have the right hand lower and the left hand upper, you can do it that way as well. Relax your arms, relax your shoulder, keep your spine straight. If you're doing this sitting in a chair, sit on your ischial tuberosity or your haunches, your sit bone, spine straight, chin tucked in slightly, feet firmly on the floor. If you're doing it on the cross-legged on the floor, that's even better. Whether you can sit comfortably in Sugasana with your legs crossed, or whether you, you can do the half lotus or the full lotus, only do those if you feel completely comfortable without any strain. And um, the next and last question I have is, how many are you going to do? And how are, are you going to keep track? In the beginning, you're going to do 16 as I think I said before. And the way to keep track is when your ha hands are uh, in your lap, each time you, you'll keep track with your fingers. So um, you do one complete in and out breath, you move your thumb away from the index finger. You do a second one, and now you move the index finger with the thumb. You do the third one, and now the middle finger goes. So it's just like, let me go into the light again. So imagine now that this is my palm and it's in my lap. And I do one complete in and out breath. My thumb goes there. Second one, index finger goes with the thumb. Third one, like that. Or you can also do it this way. Hold on, let me move this camera. You can also, let me, you can also do it this way in which thumb goes up, in, up, one, two, three, four, five. And you're doing 16, so you'll do three rounds of five plus one. All right, well, that's an introduction to pranayam. I think this Buddha here, yeah, let me point this. I don't know if you can see, let's see. Yeah, I think you can see that the Buddha's hands are 
in the palm. His palms are in his lap like that. Okay, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Thank you.